If you're in a socialist country with multiple parties, and one of the parties is a capitalist party, what would you do if that party started gaining momentum? People oh my god, Ethan is asking such a question. You murder them all! Say it! You kill them all! Kill those motherfuckers in a video game, sorry. Holy sh**. Murder those motherfuckers in the street. Let the streets... Let the streets soak in their fucking red capitalist bloods. That's what Mao did. That's what they did after the um, after the Bolshevik Revolution to other lefties. The the solution to that would always be education and <laughs> re-education camps. <laughs> Bring more uh, re-education. Mm -hmm. Re-education certainly. Yeah. In a socialist nation, uh, on the other flip of the coin. Wouldn't you also all have this, a similar movement of people, a party of people wanting to move towards capitalism? There will, there will probably, there will always be, yes, people so what's who the are difference? counter revolutionary. Um, well, not just that. I mean, there's a move because capitalism, um, social democracy, there's a certain level of individualism that you don't have with, with uh, socialism. Perhaps I would say and so and so I would ask you what's the difference you're saying that social democracy nations are gonna the rich people are always gonna be trying to erode the system that's an assumption by the way um, well it's not an assumption necessarily as well, it's uh, just not, it's as just not descriptive in comparison to like I mean it's descriptive if you look at um, how it has uh, played itself out in Europe where we and you're right I agree I agree that's what they'll be doing so I'm not even gonna argue even that. America America <laughs> had a lot of social democratic principles in the New Deal I'm not even gonna argue that no. but I do think that in a socialist country like I said there's gonna be a, a sizable amount of people moving towards capitalism so what's the difference they would kill those people they would murder those people and they're also they would murder those people that's the difference between liberalism and illiberalism in liberalism you can have fascists like Donald Trump or socialist commies like Hassan that are advocating for everybody to move towards their ideology but in any of their worlds those people would be f murdered that's the difference I wish somebody was giving Ethan real answers right now um, that is the act that's why so many of these guys have put him against the wall the blood will run red with or the streets will run red with the blood of landlords and blah 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 like mechanism of control which exists in neoliberal capitalism as well and um this is actually an area where i very much uh uh diverge from the from other socialists doubt it you only diverge when it's politically popular to do so throw them on a tanky podcast and you're just as much a tanky as the rest of them don't ever trust a lefty don't ever trust a lefty when they tell you they're more liberal than the other guys so they never just like tr trusting a crypto nazi or crypto fascist when they say oh no like we'd respect other people it's the exact same type of thing the exact same type of thing i would say or even more orthodox marxists that i believe the neoliberal mechanisms of control um uh, specifically uh it's just the boogeyman describe it free market uh markets are better than free market neoliberal is free market i think neoliberalism implies a certain type of disdain for especially far lefty movements i think it implies a certain type of globalist capitalist agenda so things like the world economic forum the international monetary fund um a particularly hawkish view of foreign policy i think this is what neoliberalism implies i don't think neoliberalism is just markets that's capitalism but okay uh, then the government at, at dealing with everything okay um so i i think that there is uh two different as as reductive as possible there's two different types of control control is always going to happen this is what the state is there to do right uh under liberal capitalist democracies in the west you have a neoliberal mechanism of control that dulls the masses through commodities, gives you the false uh, notion of choice. You feel like you have 32 different brands of Oreos, even though they're like owned by three companies that price fix. That's right? neoliberalism is when and all the Oreos are owned by three companies. Is that neoliberalism? Neoliberalism is when all the ice cream flavors are, are all at Baskin Robbins. They basically control all matter of commodities. And those markets are completely captured. Mm. But captured? What do you mean by what do you mean by captured? As in there is this idea that there are uh, you know this endless, boundless amount of of choices that you can choose <coughs> from. On the other side, 
the more authoritarian mechanisms of control which have existed What's in... What's your opinion? I like the neoliberal one. I think that uh, even in a socialist state, uh, you should still very much give the people uh, the the false notion of choice and what? make it feel like they have a say in the process while oh. doing the bidding of I mean it's a pretty cynical worldview but I think that you know that's what states are supposed to do let me ask you this and that and will create a structure where there are significantly less uh, people who are like I hate the system right now I don't feel happy I don't feel good in the system that I exist under mm -hmm. so I should uh, you know do counter-revolutionary capitalist reforms. Well, and likewise, I don't think there's that many people in Sweden or Norway who are saying, no, we need to move to a pure socialist because everybody there is provided for. I don't True. Think large, I, I'm speaking True. No, you're, you're absolutely you're right. right. You're actually 100% correct. So, so, like... Some Orthodox Marxists actually hate the welfare state for this reason because the... <laughs> why does Ethan tweak out so much? Um, I believe that Ethan has Tourette's. So that's why you kind of see him make, like, weird jerking motions and sometimes is that's part of his Tourette's syndrome. The welfare state is a continuation of capitalism by offering social, uh, offering certain amenities. Seems like the, in that the, case. The liberal capitalism has thrived and, uh, and, and has created a structure where like the inherent contradictions that exist under capitalism that I think everyone would agree with, including yourself, uh, those inherent contradictions become uh, a little bit more muddied and they never end up getting to a point where uh, they, they converge and, and uh, capitalism erodes into so, some socialist formation. Let me be, I guess, more specific. If you're in a socialist country, is there one party or multiple parties? Um, it depends. I mean, <laughs> hey, let's look at Vietnam. In because one. Hey, let's look at China. Oh, it depends. Imagine having to say it depends. In capitalism, in neoliberal societies, you're given a false choice when all the ice cream manufacturers are really ran by three ice cream makers. Oh, how many political parties do you get in a socialist system? Party's scary, right? Can we agree on that? A one-party system would, is not a good system. I think you and I would agree that we... No, no, no. I'm just asking you. I don't care about the United States. I'm asking but, you about socialism. The, I, I think that there are different forms of governance and the United God, States... God, he's such a weasel. Does his audience see him weaseling? Do you think... I think one party would be bad. Well, um, there are uh, different uh, forms of governance. The is not that different. I don't from... care about the United States. I, want to know, I just want to talk about a socialist... I think country. that no matter what happens, the state does what the state is supposed to do. You can either... What do... a non-answer. Do it at the behest of your citizens because you genuinely earnestly believe that like that is the best possible way of developing a society or you do it at the behest of capital owners and and capitalism so you're saying you don't think it matters if there's one party or i don't think it matters party. as far as um i care about direct democ de direct democratic participation because in local uh, in in local one positions. party systems with socialism how can you answer that way how, imagine saying because the whole center point for the whole like quasi wannabe democratic cuck bullshit is that well democracy democracy would democracy in the workplace now after complaining that there are only three different oreo makers now you're going to complain that or now you're going to make the claim that it doesn't matter how many political parties exist more communism has pretty much always been a catastrophe yeah a human humanitarian disaster no no i agree with that there's just so much risk in having one party i i agree with that i think that a multi-party system is obviously going to be better My oh now he says it a minute or two after bullying from from ethan he finally says it okay point is that it doesn't even matter if you have a parliament it doesn't even matter if you have a multi-party system <laughs> the changes that are being made in one direction or the other are oftentimes incredibly marginal um and and Let's yeah that's how systems work by marginal incremental change Welcome to every parliamentary, congressional, government thing ever. Yeah, that's for stability. That's what you kind of need, incremental change. No country would work if everything was dramatically changing every fucking two months. Uh, and the differences are not born out of, like, uh, so, you know, the party disagreements. The differences are born out of, like, genuine material conflict. Like, even including, like, the civil war. It's never, like, the kindness of people's... Uh, or, or like one party of individuals being like, we are kind, we want to do good things, and the other side is bad. Because you're not supposed to be kind in doing good things. You're supposed to be representing your constituents. Congress and parliament and executive leadership, it's not about kindness. It's about doing what the people that voted for you want. And they want to do bad things. Like <laughs> so what I want to say was this then. But, if you're in a socialist country with multiple parties, and one of the parties is a capitalist party, mm -hmm. which would surely exist, yeah. what would you do if that party started gaining momentum? And it was clearly like, people oh my God, Ethan is asking such a question. You murder them all. Say it. You kill them all.
You kill everybody. That's what the leftists do. That's what Mao did. That's what they did after the um, after the Bolshevik Revolution to other lefties. That's what you do in a leftist country. When you take over, you kill all the other people. That's what happens. Wanted that. That's what the Nazis did when they took power. <laughs> when they were working with the lefties, they killed the lefties there. Now the Nazis weren't lefty, but like yeah, when you when you are an illiberal party, when you don't believe in liberalism and you gain power, the first thing you do is you kill everybody else that opposes you or has any actual parliamentary threat to you, parliamentary, democratic, whatever kind of threat, whatever governmental threat. Route. They wanted that route. Yeah. So what do you do? I think um, I would do what America has done. Not to. The oh my God, he's such a pussy. How can you? How can you be this tall and eat that much chicken and be such a pussy ass little fucking bitch? He's actually such a pussy. Can we get like some four foot eight midget here that Hassan can press so that he can get some of his fucking confidence back? God, he's such a weak willed individual. Oh my God. Say it with your fucking chest. Holy shit. To the same Which degree. Is what? Not to the same degree as like, uh, you know, McCarthy's trials or anything like that. Um, oh, so you, so you would be you would trial them? You'd convict them of crimes? You bring up McCarthy, McCarthyism, the guy that hunted down everybody for communism. Does Ethan know the reference of what you're saying right now? But um, I would offer additional amenities to ensure that people are comfortable and happy because I feel like oh, any. But what do you do if they're like, nah, fuck that, we're doing capitalism? Yes, yes. Well, if everything is if everything is given to you, yeah. At that point, if every single thing is given to you, if all of your problems are solved, which I think we can both agree uh, is is not under capitalism and has not happened. No. Um, if all of those problems have been solved, then there is no need for conflict of that regard. But they're they, saying, no, we want to ultimate... do, because they're like, yo, this is a free country, right? Well, we want to do capitalism. Yeah. We think the market should regulate the prices and shit. Like, there, and we always... don't think the workplace should be um, socialized. Okay, that's a great, that's a great question. And what uh, about, because... you have to ask why though, at that point. Because, oh my God, well, but he won't answer. People never be explained by why anyway. Hassan won't you know answer what I mean? the question. Gonna be dumb. You're right. It's like, you don't, it's just gonna exist. Hassan you know? won't answer because the question is you would kill them. Just say it, that's what you would do. You would kill people who are opposing you um, in your illiberal regime. If liberals come up and you're illiberal, you would kill them. That's what you do. It. Yeah. And so, if the, and so if the will of the people is to go back to do more of a social de democracy, is that something that a socialist country should move towards? Or should there be resistance in the government to keep socialism? I think the resistance should be akin to how capitalist <laughs> governments have resisted historically any kind of socialist movement. Not to that same degree of violence, but I think that, yes, um, the, the solution to that would always be education. And uh, <laughs> re-education camps <laughs> offering more uh, re-education. Re-education, certainly, yeah. Somebody give me the um, somebody give me the clip of that one loser who's like, we would house our comrades in uh, in re-education camps. Somebody please give me the clip. Please give me the clip. I know that that's like a that's trigger word. Camps. No, no, not like that. Um, I know this is true. <laughs> not the camps. Oh, no, 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 no. Your word because everyone goes, oh, re-education. What do you mean? Like immediately people think like, are well, you talking about, that. are you talking about like resident schools? Are you talking about uh, Xinjiang? Yeah, 100%. They yeah. do. They do it. They did it in Xinjiang. Which, which isn't I think good, is, right? No, I don't agree with that. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it was good. And this is uh, something I have openly criticized as well. Like the, that's not good. The massive surveillance apparatus they built in Xinjiang is not good. So what would be good about the, a socialist re-education camp for capitalists? <laughs> it wouldn't necessarily, I don't think it'd be camps. I mean, it depends. <laughs> Well, it wouldn't be cat. Oh my God, I, I don't hate him. I don't hate Hassan. What I hate are all of the mind-numbingly retarded fucking fans that can watch him squirm like this and not think that it's the most, you literally have the fucking, you've got like the drunken Dayquil master over here, okay, Ethan, asking the most innocuous questions and Hassan is acting like he's getting pressed in front of like a fucking Senate Judiciary Committee and he's like under oath and he's like committed like 50 million crimes he's trying to hide from the United States. Like it's, actually appalling depends on oh, it depends on crime yeah. right like are people <laughs> committing crimes at the behest of this because if there's a socialist state and uh, someone is doing like white terror let's say or someone is doing south wages. korean style uh you know purges of communists which have always which has happened historically in every country that america sorry hold on we just skipped so much shit. just stupid my synergy froze oh this is the um but rather than a this is the clip hold on <laughs> <laughs> this is what they want to do. Abandoning the diagnosed or untreated mental illness will be substantially lower. 
It's a sad fact that some violent or predatory individuals may never be capable of entering back into society, but rather than abandoning these people, we must do our best to give them the best possible chance at recovery and reform with the hopes of eventually re-entering society. In situations where re-entry does seem possible, care must be taken to monitor and assist these reformed individuals to preempt relapse or deception and to ensure that the patient successfully merges back into wider society. Reactionaries and counter-revolutionaries would be treated in a very similar manner. How we deal with former capitalists, fascists, and other such oppressors will be one of the great tests of anarchist society. Great care must be taken to treat them compassionately and humanely, giving them every opportunity to join our society as active and productive comrades, starting by treating them like any other comrade with special circumstances. Rather than ship deposed class enemies off to inhumane gulags or otherwise seek out revenge, they should be placed in reform centers where they are able to live in comfort and benefit from counseling and education, teaching them about the benefits of our new society. Some may never be willing to give up their abuses and these diehard oppressors would need to be secluded, perhaps indefinitely. But capitalists and reactionaries who demonstrate a willingness to re-enter society on equal footing should be given every opportunity to learn, grow, and eventually rejoin our community in peace. <laughs> Bro, somebody link this to Ethan. That's what Hassan wants. Well, it would probably be a lot better than like, uh, you know, a prison structure where they have slavery, like in the United States of America. I'm still a little bit confused about the ideal mechanism of a socialist country, whereas there, where people still have individual freedoms to like form, to assemble. But not and capitalists. And also be like, yeah, I'm a capitalist, so what? And we're trying to grow our movement. I don't understand the organization of the socialist free country because it seems to me to have a socialist country uh they, there needs to be some amount of dampening of you know freedoms uh, yes that is illiberal correct right well because like for, for what i yes said yes and no because Justin, my no. point is always the same uh it's that this is a constant this is consistent what you're describing is consistent with the american formation it's consistent with capitalism it's just a reality that will always exist mm -hmm. violence and who gets to do violence is an inherent part of politics because politics is uh, at the end Ooh. of the day a distribution of resources and a distribution of violence who gets to have what resources and who doesn't have the resources as a consequence of that and if they do something to get those resources <coughs> what the state will be able to do the state has a monopoly on violence across the board no matter what happens right I'm not an anarchist. A lot of anarchists uh, will get mad at me for saying this, but the state should have <laughs> some level of, of uh, a violent mechanism because well, no matter what happens, and, stuff, and yeah. there's different forms of violence as yeah. well. The structural violence of poverty or direct violence in the, in, uh, in the form of, of uh, military uh, boots on the ground, military warfare, imperialism, police violence, police brutality. These are all different forms of violence. There will be some exertion of force required yes. to maintain a socialist country. Yes, uh, not just a social country, any country. Sure, any country. Yes, I agree. Until we uh reach a point of of mass education guess, uh, where everybody is uh, being chilling production being uh, and our productive output has gotten to a point where it's so streamlined and and so organized that um there is no need for a state but i don't know if we'll, we will ever be able to get there uh where the state withers away and we have a classless borderless moneyless society yeah, you probably yeah i mean if it is it's like not a, a like long a time it'd have to be like post world war three or something <laughs> um let me ask you i guess another angle here so, um Ex worker exploitation seems to be at the heart of socialism. And These young socialists want and to so overthrow I want to ask capitalism you this question. in an authoritarian an socialist state because the aesthetic is cool. Cool. Employ is fairly compensated, and by fairly, I mean that factors like work, um, uh, compensation, you know, they're being paid well beyond the means of living. They can afford uh, comfortable housing, food, mm -hmm. pleasure, vacation, savings, all the things people would want to do with money. If they're provided in all those ways that are, we see as important, is that still exploitation? Um, in the Marxian sense, yes. yes. In the capitalist sense, no. Capitalism is and the so, well social. So, is, Mark, when you say Marxism, you're talking yeah. about socialism. Yes, right? yes, yes. Okay. So, uh, in the in the Marxist perspective, under you know uh, Marxian economics, Marxist theory, uh, exploitation is not a good or bad thing. Uh, it is just a thing that happens. <laughs> okay. Um, and it goes back to something I've described many, many times over, which is that the there there are two classes. Um, there is the labor class, the wage laborers, the proletariat. And the, the bourgeois class, the capital owning class, right? Mm -hmm. And these two classes have two uh, inherently contradictory interests. You work jobs when you had a boss and someone was paying you, and you have been a boss, so you have gone through both of these stages. So as someone who worked in a job, as a, as a wage laborer, as a W-2 employer, 1099 contractor, you wanted to work the least amount of hours for the most amount of pay. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's understandable. That's like perfectly reasonable, right? Yep. Like you want more money and you want to work less hours. You want to have more freedom. Your boss, on the other hand, wants you to work the most amount of hours for the least amount of pay like that they can get away with. Yeah. So um, this inherent contradiction is at the heart of capitalism 
and is how commodities are produced under a capitalist mode of production. Now, when you have this, when you have this imbalance, those who do have capital end up always being able to pay you much less than your actual output. So that is what's happening now. Yeah. My question is, in a situation, as I outlined, where the employees are fairly provided for, which I outlined before, is that when I say exploitation, I mean, like, I think that also has a vernacular, like, when the ruling class is um, committing some kind of harm or injustice on their workers. Um, no, it, it, it's, it's beyond that. You could be paying your employees fairly <coughs> and still engage in the act of exploitation. So then, because I don't well, want to get top of that, because you're saying exploitation is neutral. By its yes, yes, exploitation well. in the Marxian sense is, is not good or bad. It's just <clears throat> descriptive. A lot of what Marx has talked about with but, respect so what to does capitalism he mean then, is descriptive. descriptive. But what does he mean then when he goes, uh, the exploitation of workers? Clearly, he wants to end the exploitation of workers. Yes, of course. So is it still exploitation of workers if they're fairly provided for? Yes, it because, because the, the fairness in this regard is not met on the metrics of like living standards, but instead on the metrics of what their output is. So when, and, and this gets into the labor <coughs> theory of value, Excuse right? Me, the labor theory of value, which is, which is different than marginal utility, which is what we use currently when we ascribe, when we, when we say this is this much, like something is this valuable, right? <coughs> ice cream is $4, um, but if it's really hot out, maybe ice cream is $5 because, well, there's a little bit of scarcity on, uh, on, on the supply, but the demand has gone up. So now ice cream is more expensive. Whereas from a Marxian perspective, the value of that ice cream is, uh, is, is, is stable. It's just what kind of labor went into the production of it. What were the, uh, what were the, the resources used to make that ice cream? What kind of, like what, uh, kind of capital was put into the ice cream factory. So even all the of that, and then also, also the, 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 the moving part. What if it's like really hot outside and the employees have to work harder that day? Wouldn't the cost increase? That situation would be the labor of it. If the employee is extremely satisfied yeah. and they feel well provided for, I mean, in a sense, it's like, who are you to tell him he's being exploited? Well, you're... you're Again, you're I know you, you want to get caught up on that the not, defini because definition because of that word, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah no, I understand. It's, it's <coughs> what I would say in that situation is this, right? Um, relying on the magnanimous nature of your boss yeah. and hoping that like your boss doesn't uh, succumb to greed and and choose to change certain things about your workplace conditions can be great. And there are people like yourself out there who are, as far as I understand, pretty good bosses, right? But that that is never going to be. The, that's never going like to be the right. constant. That's never, never. going to be the case. But in social democracy, yeah. you set up the bumpers, you set up the systems where yeah. they, they have to do that. Well, that's the bare minimum they have to do. Well, and then we go back to the erosion <laughs> of the, the amenities. I don't feel like that's a strong enough argument to say socialism is better. No, as long <laughs> as there is, as long as there is a, some kind of, of uh, <laughs> capitalist compensation in any sort of sector, they will always choose to monopolize. This is what most companies, like this is what every company does when they become a company, a corporation. They're, they're, their job is to, their goal is to inevitably become a monopoly. You can do that by rent seeking. Well, so what? You, you know, so what? If there's, well, they still have to follow the rules. Well, no, when you are, when you are becoming a monopoly, yeah. you are either engaging in horizontal integration and expansion or vertical integration and expansion, mergers, acquisitions, um, and, and, you know, what Amazon has done, for example, mm -hmm. in, in e-commerce is a great example of this. And when you get to that point, uh, especially under a capitalist state that still has market reforms, you end up uh, using the, the additional capital that you've accumulated in the form of profits from your workers to lobby the government and erode the safety nets. Yeah, but you're talking like it's a guarantee. And again, I it go back... It's been a guarantee every I, single well, time. And, I, and it's been a guarantee by the same metric that any socialist country de devolves into, into Ooh, disaster. I mean, it's not true. fair to put it, that out there like it's just given. Because on the, on the other flip coin, you can say, uh, you know, uh, this, like I mentioned, socialism, there's going to be people moving towards capitalism. So socialist it's nation just, it's states, too hypothetical. Socialist nation states, too hypothetical. however, historically, most of them at least, have not eroded or been destroyed due to like people who are just like, I want to be capitalist. Usually those people are being uh, goaded or supported, facilitated by a much more powerful nation. Ah, uh, nobody could naturally desire free markets or liberalism. They always have to be externally motivated for it. Oh, okay. Um, that uh, is, is using the, the uh, inherent greed to their advantage to uh, cause divisions. But the real material issues in socialist nation states, historical socialism, mm -hmm. uh, real socialism in the real world that has happened, has always been due to mishaps, uh, you know, famine, 
uh, or or the government exercising too much authoritarian yeah, control. Yeah, you can see the same these thing. Sorts of things, these sorts of things uh, are, are the real reasons as to why social nation states have uh. failed, not necessarily their, their uh, economic mode of production switching over to a more labor-focused <laughs> uh, economy. And then also um, there, there are so many different types of uh, socialist developments, like a socialist mode of, of production, that um, there is no like one absolute perfect one. And I'd be a liar if I told you I, don't, I know which one it is. You know what I mean? So go back to the, the original question. Let's just ignore this um, theory that in social democracy, and I'll say this, you know, obviously we have antitrust laws that are not good, that are not been effective in the least bit. Yeah, but it's I would also ask something you, you can regulate. No, but I would ask you why. Well, because our, our government is super corrupt. Mm -hmm. wow. Why is the government corrupt? Not because the people are, oh, no. are inherently flawed. Do you think the government's corrupt because people are inherently flawed? Corruption in yeah. that sense, I disagree with you there. Some people, not all people. No, that's another I, thing I said. People I know. are inherently greedy and people lost their mind. Some people are. The actually, reason, I want to talk about that at better length, but go ahead. That's actually a great take as well. We can, we can cover that as well. Yeah. I, um, I always butcher this quote, but I, f I forget who it was. It might have been Mark Fisher. It might have been someone else. But um, assuming that greed is inherent in human nature under a capitalist organization of the economy is like assuming the black lung is inherent I'm not in human nature capitalism. if you work at a fucking coal mine. See, that's that's not a good analogy. Because, no, you're in right. My greed is a part of it. Self-interest is a part of it. Not greed necessarily, but self-interest is a part of human existence. <coughs> why we have uh, built societies self and how we've done it. However... is a, survi a biological survival exactly. mechanism. Exactly. However... If we didn't have self-interest, we, would we, we wouldn't survive as a species. I don't disagree with you. Yeah. You're absolutely correct. My argument always, and many Marxist arguments actually, have always been around individualism and self-interest and how socialism as a matter of fact creates more opportunities for uh, individual liberties for the person uh it's only been sold and, and uh, told to people as though it is uh, it, you know this this gray brutalist architecture city blocks you don't you have to you know do your government mandated coal mining job or whatever the fuck but um the the ultimate goal has always been to open up more individual liberties i'll give you an example of socialization that you and i both agree with right Healthcare, nationalized healthcare, or socialized medicine in general gives you more liberties as a person that you can actually leave your job. That, and be that would happen in a social democracy as well. Yes. However, like I've said, there has to be the, the, the countermeasures in a social democracy um, are, are uh, the, the capitalist forces are significantly more powerful because ultimately the state is still operating as a capitalist state. That is still the norm. So I think we're having like a kind of just like a disconnect, or not a disconnect, but maybe at an impasse on the, that idea. But what I'll say, I want to give you a specific example, because this, this is interesting to me. Um, <coughs> let's just take this workplace as an example, because we're all familiar with it. Mm -hmm. So I started my career 10 plus years ago, and I was successful by myself with zero employees. Yes. I made a lot of money. I, was, I did well for myself. And then, you know, five years ago into my career, I made, a pod I made the podcast, which obviously you all are watching now. So... So let's say we go back to five years ago when I hired Dan as a freelance. You started as like a f consultant. Uh, yeah, or a freelancer. Yeah. And obviously you moved to full time and I'll get to that. Yeah. So he, he started as like a freelance consultant. So what would be a fair way of compensating him for that? Oh, employment under socialism. Uh Oh, good luck. In your situation, <clears throat> um, it's it's uh like what is the most like socialist way of doing it is that what you're asking well yeah because that's yeah, what okay. we're talking about right um it would be it would be profit sharing uh what so that I means just... is profit sharing is not really socialist but you know that's not the worst answer you could give that's not the worst answer you could give so so this is this is interesting so hold on this is interesting you're right yeah. this is actually the most difficult aspect in my opinion of of like the most difficult aspect of socialism is figuring out how to hire people <laughs> trying to create the most ethical way of existing under a capitalist organization of the economy. While it's not hard under capitalism to exist as a socialist, by the way. You can organize a company in whatever structure you see fit. Nobody's keeping you from doing otherwise. You are also productive. Uh, would there be anything better? Technically, a more socialist way would be if somebody wants to work for your company, they need to buy into the company so that they're cooperative owners, so that as the company increases or decreases value, which is going to be relational to the labor that they put into it, you as an employee get to enjoy the benefits of that. That's the fruits of your labor is the increase of the in the value of the company. And then because you have a part ownership in it, you get to increase your ownership stake as well, basically. Yeah. Isn't that profit sharing? No, profit sharing is when you're paid back. Profit sharing is not an equity stake in the company. That's just like a reimbursement for a good year, a cut of the revenue.
and you're royalties versus equity you're doing like an owned and operated media company where you are the product so i hired dan as a consultant yeah just to help us out to get things uh and i have hired beautiful. people as well so then so then we're pro i'm profit sharing with him um, how much profit am i sharing with so him? the way i do it and i think this is this will be uh I mean, this is, is this is instructive for many others as well. The way I do it, like huh. the most ethical way to do it, is basically what well, Hassan does is instructive for others. Oh my God! Before now, on that tanky show, he's like, "Bro, we're just like YouTubers. We don't do shit." But now, when Ethan is pressing him, well, hold on, I'm going to act in a way that's instructive to other social. Now he's got to be like a fucking role model. Okay. Hello, what's up, dude? Hi. I have two things to say about Hassan, and what are you saying? Okay, go for it. I think one of the re well, I think the reason he supports these like Marxist ideas is because he's a money hungry, fame hungry jackass, and he just doesn't like the idea of people making more money than him. And these sorts of Marxist viewpoints would just create a, a society where other people can't out earn him. <clears throat> okay, that's a that's definitely a take. Yeah. Secondly, hit, like the Marxist theory of value is fucking stupid. Uh, like what Hassan keeps doing and what a lot of Marxists do is they ignore the fact that labor itself is a commodity. And I think you pointed it out before that if it's really hot out and employees are working harder, that would like basically increase the cost of their labor. You know sure, although big like labor theory of value guys are going to have ways to account for this, but... Um... But yeah, I mean, I don't have to say. I'm sure you're part of the you're part of the Ask Yourself community, right? Not exactly. I don't really hang out in his Discord. Oh, because I know they've got a couple of big LVT guys or LTV guys that will sit there and argue um, about Marxist shit. So, but I don't know. Okay. All right, I'm going back to listen to this. Okay. Take care. I right, to make an assessment. Um, sure, there's market considerations on the one hand, like what the normal wage would look like. But that is like the the minimum. You know what I mean? That is like the minimum. <coughs> that is uh, the the worst possible amount to pay someone in in the form of wages, in my opinion. Okay. So, you have the market considerations on the one side, um, which I don't necessarily care too much about. Um, on the other side, you have your productive output, right? Let's say you were making ten dollars before Dan came on, and now that Dan came on, there you're making that wouldn't be measurable metric. No, no, no. I know. Wow, the DJ. Thanks for gifting five ten cents. Oh, I know. I completely agree with you. Yeah, I know. Um, True, which is why I'm saying it's, it's a asked. tricky situation. It seems almost impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Ask yourself molding. Wait, over what? Why do you even have this as ready to link? I'm give you mods so you can. I'm listening. I'm Stop. Here. Shut, I'm shut here up! Shut up! Shut up! Fuck, dude. Are you fucking retarded or something? Do you hear me speaking? Stop talking. No. <laughs> okay. Me. Well, technically, the because, other side is also well, very cruel, but, but let me just like have but that's normalized. That's true because in social democracy, people are fairly compensated. It's not cruel, that's in my opinion. <clears throat> no, there's. I, I don't think. I, I think well, we we people we think could of be more or less more fairly less fairly compensated, but like generally speaking, they'd be more fairly compensated than what we would see today. Yes, in but comparison my, to the United States of America, which technically would be a mixed market or social democracy. Uh, social democracies in other countries there is better compensation so here's the unintended consequence of that due to you know regulation government regulation. if i'm if i'm just hiring dan to come in and help me with cameras and stuff and mm -hmm. i have to cut him in on profit share people are not going to hire as many people yep. they're going to think a lot yep. more before they bring more people on well can i can i just chime in real quick I, just to clarify this point are you still talking about the the period of time where i was yes. working as a contractor yes I'm Did, not, I haven't gotten to the full time yet. Well, I'm, we're going to move to that. Right. I, I will just say that at the time, I was essentially operating as my own business as well because you weren't my only client at the time. Right. Okay. I, I did that professionally for a lot of people, and you were one of many people that I would come and do shows with okay. until you offered me a full time thing. So, just because we're using the specific example, I just wanted to clarify that because I think <laughs> that matters in what the dynamic was when we were mm -hmm. initially working together. I, I don't think that matters in such that I'm more focused just on the profit so sharing. The reason why I was bringing like up the, 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 the implications on a, the, to a business and business owner of that. Okay, but the reason why I was bringing up the revenue uh, is because let's say you were making 10, you're making $10, Dan comes on, now you're making $15, Yeah. right? Dan has brought in five extra dollars of revenue for you. And I think that uh, the, the best possible way to, to engage with that would be to cut Dan in on, uh, like offer Dan living wages plus uh, whatever, uh, whatever Dan has brought in in the form of revenue. Oh, here's a big problem. And and that moves that moves in a direction like you make 
and then later down the line, you make- Imagine ever trying to track this shit ever. Imagine you bring in Dan, and what Dan does is he helps your people schedule appointments more efficiently. So Dan comes in, you were making a million a year, now you're making 1.2 million a year. But it's not just because Dan's like scheduling people, those other people are also doing more work. How the fuck do you ever track this type of value add? How would you ever do it? Like with more, imagine doing this with three employees, let alone like a hundred. Like a hundred thousand dollars and and moves with now, yeah. yeah, Dan is Here, moving here's with it as where, well. Here's where this seems more like it's a nice theory, but like in application, it makes no sense. Who decides how much value he's brought? How yeah. could you possibly decide that? If my show is growing, Dan joins, and let's say, yeah, I, I, now I'm making $15. But the show was organically growing. How, how, can I, how can I attribute all five of that to Dan? You're absolutely and correct on supposed, this as well. This, is, this is a big witness. Am I supposed to 50-50 with him? This is, this is something that I do not have an answer for either, which is why, <laughs> it doesn't like I sense. said, which is why, like yeah. I said, you make do with, uh, you, you try to do your very best. Can I, I mean. can I be, uh, this seems like uh -oh. a big problem to say you don't have a solution for. If you're for hiring employees, yeah. You don't know how to do hiring. That seems to be a pretty, and this is the whole central part of your theory is, is better employment. That's a pretty big issue. Like, for a socialist society. I, I agree, which is why I always. It doesn't seem like oh, it's ready. Well, can Not I just ready. chime in on this? Uh, this isn't theoretical. There are, there are lots of companies that do do profit sharing. I do this. Not like this, homie. There are, what major company does profit sharing like this? Companies might give you stock options or even like allow compensation in the form of stock that's the closest you're gonna some companies might do bonuses some companies might pay on commission but like profit sharing like this no well. i know but it's not like so but like let's big say companies. this like, and, and, and they have various methods of how they do it the way no. I, there are ways to do it that make sense i do this but the way that socialism does it in the purest sense is like dan joined 10 to 15 dan gets half of the 15. So that's his, that's his even, labor. even this is, if we're talking pure theory, on, if we're talking, it, if we're talking pure theory, yeah. I would rather have an imperfect structure that still absolutely it's not offers better. It doesn't work. Well, the, if you don't know how people get paid, how does it even work? The yeah. capitalist structure also is imperfect in the exact same well, way. It's functioning at least. Yes, I know. But the, the idea that like the other structure would not function is not correct. Especially when we're telling you that even under a capitalist organization and economy, there's plenty of different ways of doing but this. There needs to one be, of the, one of the most successful ones that I also have is a cooperative, right? Um, I have a cooperative, uh, uh, collectively organized podcast, for example, where we just split it five ways regardless. Obviously, my output in that situation, given that I am uh, the, the, uh, like the host with the largest audience, would significantly outweigh my producers, for example, who uh, could be paid uh, with a very fair, very fat market uh, wage, right? Market wage plus uh, market wage times three is what I could pay him, and it would still be significantly less than what he gets paid now yeah. because we're we're cutting him in uh, five ways. We're splitting everything five ways. Yeah. And and that is a perfectly viable way to do it because I think that's very generous, but I don't think you should be forced to do that. I yeah. think that I think you should be forced to pay him what we've determined as a minimum wage where he can live in where he lives in a in a comfortable state. Yeah, I, and I, I don't, I don't agree think, with that. and I don't think and that it not, prevents it goes people beyond, from being it goes beyond wages too. generous. It goes either. beyond wages as well. There's also another aspect of this that. Uh, many people fail to consider, which is decision making. So uh, there's also the structure of decision making, the the structure of autonomy. When we are setting up the time for when we are going to shoot the podcast, like everyone has to be on board with it. It has to work around every single person's schedule. Oh. These are all uh, scheduling conflicts exist oh. usually, but it's like um, in in good faith, every single person is like giving their most, uh, giving their all, and it ultimately, uh, I think, creates a pretty pretty solid product. Let me ask you. So do you acknowledge that in this socialist? Uh Theor theoretical country where I where I go from 10 to 15 and I give Dan 15 hypothetically for any worker joining that I as a business owner I would be less likely to be hiring people certainly and that's not good is it no I don't agree with that I don't think that's a necessarily a bad thing at all because like I, I don't know because like I've gone through a lot of people that did not work out mm -hmm. and they were they they were hired on like a, let's say you um, still fire them exploratory so, so is it at will employment in this situation? In this structure, can you can them? you can still, of course, like you can still uh, have issues with uh, with an employee and fire them. There's it's ironic because like Japan, for example, is like the most capitalist country on the planet, and yet uh, in Japan they have this like very unique culture where getting into a place of business is very difficult. But once you actually have made it into the corporation. They don't fire you. They can't sure. fire you. They sure. never fire you. What they do is uh, they, they ostracize you and, and make you into a social pariah within the company right. and, and try to get you to quit. Is it because they're trying to avoid paying some kind of severance or is it just No, it's like it's both cultural and I if I'm not mistaken, it could literally so have gnarly. legal implications as well. But it but it works, right? Okay. It technically well, works. But I'm saying how, why is it <laughs> hey, why more is it not a good <laughs> So as a business owner, 
I think the fact that I was not super hesitant to hire lots of people, mm -hmm. find the crew that works. I worked with a lot of people it did not who were not compatible. Mm -hmm. So I was able to burn through enough people to find a team that that worked, right? Okay. And so if if right. I was so hesitant to hire people because I have to profit share with them, I would do like a way more strenuous interview process. That it would seems take way you're, longer. Yeah, you're making an argument for why it, it's stronger. Like you I don't lucked think out with so Dan. at all. You lucked out with Dan? I don't think that's oh, a thanks. good argument because first of all, it's good that people can go try a bunch of jobs before they try find one that works. And as an employer, it's good to be able to try a bunch of people to find the right fit for employees. If I had to go through the strenuous process to find each one of them, this podcast may, may very well likely not exist as it does today. It might not exist as at all. I, I disagree with you on that for sure. I think that okay, I why? think that it's it's better to have a, a strenuous process of, of um, ensuring that you even have for the like, best possible e Even person. for like the most entry level job? Um, yeah, I think that it's, but then it's perfectly doesn't that, valid. Doesn't that result and, in people not getting work? So, yeah. Yes, it will. So there's, but then, but then we're yeah. talking about like an entirely separate way of, of organizing the economy. <laughs> oh, let me go back. Why is it better? Why way? is it better that I have to go through like extraneous I mean, full-on HR hypotheticals. processes? We, it, we, we're talking about hypotheticals yeah. in this situation. Yeah. So yeah. it can, like, I can just hypothesize that you found Dan. Not even hypothesize. Well, no, no, we're not talking, well, we're talking <laughs> hypothetically, but we're like, talking. You, you found Dan, so you clearly. But uh, we went through a lot of people before we found Dan. Yeah. Well, you could have arrived at Dan as well, is what I'm saying. It would have taken a lot longer, process. and the business might not have survived. Okay. so There was a point where the podcast almost got wrapped up. Yeah. So why is it better, in theory, to have that extraneous of a hiring process than being able to kind of just people try things out? Um, it's only This is only one aspect of it, but what you're talking about, like the extraneous hiring process also would exist under a social democracy as well. It should exist in some form under a social democracy as well. Like some, some level of protection from, from being fired. But so in social democracy, you're not rev sharing. So there's like this yeah. big thing that you're like, I'm a business owner. I've created this business from mm -hmm. my own sweat and blood and tears mm -hmm. over the last 10 years. And I'm making a lot of money. I got to hire this guy who I don't know anything about and I got to cut him in on my profits. That doesn't exist in social democracy. So the risk to me as the business owner is way, it, it way, 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 it's much smaller True. to a much way smaller less. degree because it, it's supposed to exist through unions. And once again, it's not just revenue sharing. Not, everyone always, everyone always focuses on that aspect of it. But rev sharing comes in the form of benefits. Rev sharing comes in the form of like how much we invest in. It'd be nice if we could talk to someone who knows the system a little more thoroughly, hence Vosh. <laughs> R&D, for example, or what kind of R&D initiatives we invest in. All of these decisions are made by a board. Well, that's that all regulated. That's the responsibility to the shareholders that is not regulated under social democracy. This, 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 is, the, this is the major <laughs> well, point of contention. What do you mean by then? Because you see, in our example... Like in Germany, they have the, a, a trade union representative uh, that, that sits on the board of executives. But that's only one, uh, that's only one aspect of a... Uh, a larger board that is still representing the interests of, of the shareholders, those who own the company, who never have seen the company. They can you know, even globally own it, right? So having one vote in that situation is not as good, in my opinion, as having all of the vote, all of the power, making these decision, decisions as a collective, something that kind of is not legally enforced here, right, in your structure, but you, you kind of you abide by it because you're a nice guy. People Many people whose videos he reacts to without crediting them. People are not going to be like that. Many, and I'm saying that we shouldn't rely on the magnanimity. Uh, well, magnanimity we don't have to. We we're going back to this point because we don't have to with the right. Well, even an example. Like, let me ask you. When we, I mentioned that Germany still yields terrible, uh, like still the is susceptible to capital. Did what you said one by one. He killed everyone who didn't agree with them. Yep. Took over every industry and bankrupted them. They burned every book that went against their the brainwashing and militarized everyone to fight the neoliberalists. Gotcha. Let me ask you this. Wait, yes, it is. Germany, is it? Germany arguably is. Uh, yes. Not Every, as much as... Okay, America. I don't know a lot about Germany, so America, I'm not going to... I don't want to get into that. America is a social democracy as well. The problem is, like, American social democracy is a, is a laughable uh, uh, example so of let's social not democracy. use it then. But going back, why is it better, because I don't think I ever got an answer, to have a strenuous hiring process? Why is it better to have a strenuous... Uh, you are... When you engage in, in commodity production with another person, I think it's perfectly valid to ensure that this person is not going to be like a scumbag and cheat you, fuck you over. I think it's, it's good business practice, even in a capitalist sense, to ensure that the person that you're hiring is not like okay. some fucking well, right. random that's dickhead. Just, that's, just, um, yeah. that's just common sense. And the more you, but you grow... Do acknowledge the, so you do acknowledge the hesitant, hesitancy to hire people. I do. I, I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad I don't know what... Okay. We'll move I, I don't on. think it's a bad thing. I guess a bit of an because, impasse again. Because, and as companies grow, you have different people in different units that also are, you know... Uh, engaging in hiring like it's just that workers now have more of a say in which direction the company should go and that's a good this thing it's not a bad for me thing. for like a week after on my business i spent five years building i don't want to give him a decision on where the company goes yeah i think that yeah why should he have that right well, yeah no, I mean, I, i'm not saying the janitor comes in and unilaterally makes decisions not but, unilaterally but why should he have any say at all he's not risking any of it right it's well, not how that works but i'm curious how it does work so 
it's a it's a it's communication. The other person is a human being as well. If you have a major disagreement, then you look for someone else to work in that position. This is how it works. Okay. The, the I'm only not getting an answer on the rev that you don't have the, you you're, don't not, ha you're not going to get an answer, Ethan, because he has no fucking idea what he's talking about, and he doesn't even do this shit in his own practice. He doesn't even run his own businesses like this, like how he wants to legally mandate every other person run their business, even though he, there's nothing stopping him from doing this if he wanted to. He could absolutely run his businesses like this. He chooses not to because he knows it's a dog shit, untenable way of running shit. I have the 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 fear of like subsistence living at the other end of that bargain whereas like you have better amenities better protections and and so therefore you're more you comfortable good living conditions because the idea is that's what i'm that, already saying that i don't think that makes socialism unique because we can provide good living conditions and benefit we can but we haven't now that by the way but, one aspect again, of social democracy that we've talked about uh, is the domestic one we have yet to even uncover the other much worse side of social democracies which is uh, uh resource extraction in the third world and imperialism uh, and, and that is a necessity. Yeah, but homie, you haven't even addressed the basic employment shit. Why do you want to move on to foreign policy? Like... Under global capitalism, and that is the reason why we have the haves and the have-nots. On the domestic level, you believe that there is a regulatory agency that can make things more just. I don't feel prepared ensure... to have a conversation about the third world stuff because I'm not super familiar with it. Perfectly fine. But, but like, I can... But, but, I mean, I but can you understand that, like, that's a, a part of, of how everything I mean, works. Explo well, so exploiting in the truest sense of the word is definitely what's been <laughs> yeah, happening. Even on, a, even on a capitalist understanding, yeah. that's, like, yeah. hyper-exploitation. I mean, clear, clearly, I think that all humans on this earth deserve um, rights and comfort and... Yeah, and a right. To, yeah, you know what I mean. It is funny though. Like, life. one thing I it will mention funny, in the though. domestic, you know, What's going funny? back to the labor force thing is that like we're so susceptible <clears throat> and and so programmed under capitalist dogma that we refuse to see a world outside of it, and we're so captured in that uh, in that worldview that uh, oftentimes the, the the number one counter against a, a socialist governance or democracy in the workplace or anything like that is always like, what do you want? The fucking janitor that just came in yesterday to make these decisions. Like, no one no, said he's the CEO. I just now. want to understand how it works because you keep saying. <laughs> Rev yeah. share. That's your Rev share is only one component so the of the Rev share can no, be democratically like, assigned. If the we we'll say what? Okay, here's an example. When I first started the podcast, I was originally undercast. It was fucking terrible. We quit. We started our own podcast, me and Will. We need a producer because we don't have that skill set. We need someone to change the cameras and maybe do a little bit of uh, you know, someone to post the videos, do the captions, titling, thumbnailing, right? So in that situation, we looked for someone, we found someone, and we were splitting it three ways. We were splitting the revenue three ways, anything that we made, okay. right? And even before that, I was also giving March money as well to make sure that he like at least had a fucking, you know, had, had a revenue opportunity even when we weren't generating a lot of revenue, okay. right? So what did I do after that? The podcast grew, Fear and now has five cast members. We brought in Austin Show, my good friend, and Cutie Cinderella. And when that happened, us three, we got together and we had a conversation. Okay. Do we need more hosts? Do we think that this will be beneficial? Right. Right. Do we think that we will end up making, you know, more revenue, generating more revenue in the long run? Right. Will we have people with unique uh, creative ideas? Like I care more about the creative output than anything else than revenue. I haven't even touched the fucking revenue that I've generated from the podcast. Um, and we got together and we had a conversation. And I think that that is a significantly more equitable and just and better way of doing business than me hiring March, me giving Will some money originally, like a fat salary, or maybe cutting in on the rev share for him, and then giving- This works with this type of company because you've got three people that are all doing the exact same job that are all public facing and doing the same type of thing. Now talk about a supermarket. Talk about a manager in a supermarket having made decisions about what he wants to order with somebody that just works at a cash register, or somebody that just works at delivering product in the back, or somebody that just works at maintaining Maintaining the HVAC, like that's the issue that you run into. Yes, with three employees with the same type of job, they're all doing the same thing with the same public facing thing that all have about the same ownership. Obviously, this conversation is easy. This is the easiest form of understanding how to solve this type of problem. But do it where you've got employees that are all filled into highly uh, specialized, highly differentiated roles that all have very different stakes in the company, right? Being March like a super. Also, all the people involved in this fucking podcast are already fucking rich. None of these people are negotiating for their for their food every night, right? It's also a way different thing too. High fucking wage, right? Way higher than like the average producer, and then uh, and then making these decisions single handedly. Let me add another aspect to your example. Let's say you need to hire a cleaner to come. Clean yes, the cleaner. There you go. She works for the podcast. Correct. She comes. She cleans the office. She works full time. How yeah. do you pay her? Yeah. Um. The the cleaner side of this. Is not like I mean I don't have an office like that, but the janitorial services. Like, in, a, in a theoretical situation where we have someone that, that needs to do it, yeah, we, we would we would also get together mm -hmm. as a unit. Yeah. Okay, the existing company would get together and decide what level. Just like hiring the two other hosts, we decide what level of revenue 
cuts we are going to take from our 5% to give so you're making to the other person. It's not really that different than a so, salary. And, and once they get that job, and there are many different ways of doing this, but once they get that job, and let's say they worked for two years, three years, then they have a say in the revenue sharing structure and the power sharing structure as well. Because it doesn't have to happen like instantaneously. A lot of people oh forget God. that. Like, my problem is that in yeah. the socialist uh, economy, if this is being regulated by the government, people can get together now and decide to do whatever the f they want in their Yes! Company. That's why liberalism, that's why capitalism, that's why this form of economic and socio-political organization exists almost all over the world is because it's so flexible. It's so flexible. That's one of the great things about liberalism. One of the, liberalism can have uh, fucking Sharia law Muslims living together with communists that want to grow food on a plantation, living together with hyper-capitalists that want to try to monopolize with vertical and horizontal mergers that can exist with every... That's one of the nice things about our current system is so many different types of people can exist. If you want to do this, if you want to make a company like this, go make it. Nobody's stopping you. But in your world, if you have a communist or a socialist organization of government, if I want to be a capitalist, you're going to murder me. You put me against the wall and kill me. Like, that's the difference. Company, mm -hmm. that's great, mm -hmm. you know? But in the socialistic economy, there's rules that says you need to pay her X amount of rev share. What you're saying is not true. Okay. You want to know why? Yes. Why? Because you want a social democracy, which kind of exists, and market regulation exists under capitalist formations, and plenty of capital owners hate that. As a matter of fact, I would say universally capital owners hate any kind of market regulation, which is why they choose to erode it as right. best as they possibly can. That doesn't even make sense. That's not even true. Hassan, that is in contradiction with both reality and your earlier stated position. Uh, regulatory capture and the idea of enforcement of things of the government is actually one of the things that large companies can enjoy at a great level. There's a reason why Amazon willingly set their wages to 15 an hour without the government having to push it. There, you can argue that there are rents, that there are forms of regulatory capture where big companies actually love these types of regulations because these types of regulations can force out smaller competitors. This doesn't even, this is, but you know this, Hassan, because I'm pretty sure you were just arguing earlier that a lot of this regulatory capture is something capitalist organizations push for, that firms and businesses try to try to enact in the government. So he's like in direct contradiction with shit that even he stated earlier in this conversation. I would say universally capital owners hate any kind of market regulation, which is why they choose to erode it as Wait. best as they possibly can, or they use it to their advantage I'm to create confused. an artificial barrier of entry into certain sectors. Oh, he just, okay, that's good. He got the second part. All right. <laughs> Vosh ran, early ran. Cut the stream there, August. Don't let him show them. I'm saying in a socialist economy. Also, there's also an argument to be made that there has been international research done. Firms do prefer to operate out of countries where the cost of labor is higher and there's stricter enforcement of like labor laws and stuff, as opposed to other countries where you might have cheaper labor, but the country is less stable due to strife, uh, revolutions, expropriation of shit, government going crazy, blah, 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 blah. So firms do appreciate some form of... Um, I'll say regulation. It's not really that they prefer the regulation. What they really prefer is the stability that regulation tends to bring. That is true. There's going to be laws. It's Just like there are laws in a capitalist I'm economy. You, capital in socialism, how, how I'm saying the government is telling you how much you need to pay the janitor. That's not how that would work. Then how would it work? But, but it, would, if, it would be, it would be it, government. Isn't that, how, how is that functionally different than minimum wage in our That's society? my point. That's my point. Yeah. Why okay, do they, well then, so, well, so why I do think, they, but socialism is much more radical. We're talking, it's not. Uh, social, it doesn't have to be. Moving I, I America, it doesn't moving America have to, be. to a purely socialistic society. Instead of, my thing is, I think social democracy is better than socialism. And you guys are explaining something to, that to me sounds a lot like something that we can already do without this huge yes. undertaking yes. of changing our economy from yes. a capitalist to social democracy one to a socialism one. You're yeah. talking about a minimum wage. We already do that. And we can uh, already do better of that, with that via mm -hmm. regulations. But, yeah. why but the, the reason why we haven't been able to is because, like, I will, I will, I think the best way to explain it is this way, okay? Okay. You like capitalism with socialist characteristics. I like socialism with capitalist characteristics. Yo, you just said that. <laughs> what does that mean? What? So, so we're, we're both social de democrats. So that doesn't mean that <laughs> I'm, no, I still believe that the government wait, should be. Wait, what's the difference be, now? You said you like social capitalism. The difference is, no, I, I said I like socialism yeah. with capitalist characteristics, meaning that the governing, the, the, the governing uh, economy, like the entire economy still revolves around a socialist mode of production where the owners, uh, the workers are the owners. They own the means of production. They have the, they, they have a say in their benefits. They have a say in and what happens to the And I can fire them whenever company. I want, though. Well, you, there will still obviously be protections against like unjust firings and whatnot, and there should be certainly. There are um, now. And there are now as well. Except really good. Uh, America is a great example of- In California, there are really America good. is a great example, however, of like how there aren't. Which how it shouldn't be, dates. and it shouldn't be what? that way. Exactly. Yeah. And, but the reason why it's not that way is because we have capitalism with like laughable socialist characters. Dude, that's we don't even I have find it very interesting that you're saying you want socialism with capital Capitalist characteristics. Capitalist characteristics in the sense that not the, it doesn't touch the means of production or the, or the mode of production, but, ne but offers uh, an offers an abundance of resources and offers the, the 
idea that you have freedom. One of the major problems with former historic socialist projects have always been commodity production being streamlined on necessity and not necessarily silly things like lighter production, industries that revolve around making, uh, I don't know, chocolate and, and coffee. Coffee was a major problem in, in, in uh, East Germany. So like things of that nature that people need, um, I think those are things that we need to work on. Uh, and, and that capitalism, I think, has done a much better job at, at offering uh, to people. And that has a very sedating uh, influence on the masses. I don't Consumerism. See what, I don't see what's so great and humanizing about hiring a janitor for 0.000015% of the company. What do you, I, I don't understand. Wait, that's not what I said. You, you just, but you the, just made that assertion. But, you, but we're saying there's a minimum wage. There's a minimum equity mm -hmm. share that that janitor would need to get. Well, are you talking about we're in comparison to doing we're profit about sharing a model? Minimum wage. Uh, right. Uh, well, it, uh, but comparing it to a, a model where employees are cut in on the profit is what you're saying. Comparing that, uh, what we have no. now to that. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I would just point out that, well, so first of all, you would uh, talk about it a lot earlier about like, well, what companies do that? There's... <laughs> a lot of examples of bigger firms that do do this kind of thing. Okay. Um, a, gr a great one is Southwest Airlines. Did you know that they have a massive employee profit sharing model? How does it work? What's the details? So it's a once a year payment and they look at how they did the last year and then a certain percentage of the profits they distribute as bonuses to all of the employees. And, it's, is, and it's fairly significant. Dude, that's great. Mm -hmm. Like in a socialist country. Then they can do that. Then let them do that. They can do that. That's great then. Country, how, that's it? That's all you want? Because that's easy. I can do, I can, you know what I mean? Like, like, what are you asking for when you're asking for socialism? Just a bonus fund based on, just based on profit? Because that's easy. Mm -hmm. uh, no, not necessarily. But I, 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 <laughs> listen, I wasn't trying to make any assertion about that. I was just trying to give you an example of, you were asking earlier, oh my God. like, what companies do that? I think here's, that's Here's awesome. a big one that does it. I think that's awesome. And I'd even be in favor of regulating that and saying, yo, you need to put aside like 5% or 10% or whatever, I don't care, mm -hmm. of your profits to distribute evenly mm -hmm. amongst your employees. Is that socialism? No, that, that, would, that, be, that would be some aspect of socialization, especially <clears throat> if it's like earned by the workers that have some level of, uh, of collective bargaining. It just seems so bureaucratic. I don't understand the workplace. Bureaucracy the still is very much the foundation of an, a, a bourgeois state as well it's but just like, that but like we we dude, don't think i'm about. talking like this is bureaucratic bureaucracy on bureaucracy on bureaucracy no i don't, I don't understand different. your workplace i'll, I'll tell you if this that's much. not good enough then what is Here, i don't understand uh there is i think uh it's called people's republic of walmart it's a really good book <laughs> um and and so like <laughs> the title. there was a genuine problem in the ussr with how to deal with uh crops <laughs> and, and agriculture <laughs> and central planning unfortunately <laughs> had limitations at the time because we did not have the computational power one of the ironically uh, uh it, like steps in in the right direction was actually coming from chile which then got their own 9-11 50 years ago, but we won't get into that because, you know, socialism bad. Um, but uh, there, was, there wasn't enough computational power uh, uh, to, to implement centralized planning at that time effectively, and it led to plenty of issues, right? So ironically, nowadays, we, are, we, we have centralized planning inside of Walmart, inside of Amazon, and uh, the, the, these companies are generating a ton of revenue mm -hmm. that they could cut their workers into. Maybe How? they would be much smaller Maybe they could be. Maybe they would be much smaller. What's the minimum size. that would make it socialist? That's what I'm curious about. I don't. I don't think there's like an exact uh, dollar value. Rather than because you're looking for an exact dollar value. Rather than I'm talking. Hold on. Somebody donated Crow Magnum man. Amazon Hassan has never worked return. a real job. It's embarrassing lack of experience. This year we've got more, more new music. Okay. We've got force and load in the background, okay? Thinking about an entirely different way of, of thinking. But there's the law. There's a law in a socialist country that says you must do I'll this. Give you, I'll Happy give you one day. example. I'll give you a, a, a good example from yeah. your life, right? Right now, you have Cam, right? Mm -hmm. Cam does wonderful goose gaffs and, and Photoshop. Splaps. We love Cam. Yeah. Thank you. And, and oh, give it up for Cam. Andrew. Let's give it up we for Cam real quick. Yeah. I love you guys. I love you guys. So, <laughs> technically, if you were interested in oh! uh, maximizing Hold your revenue. Hold up. Sorry. Whoa. What? We've got two minutes. We're on a strong run. Hold up. Hold up. Drama frogs out. We don't do politics here. This is a force and 24 seven reaction stream. He's set up. Okay, we just need a good perch. Are we about to crush? Crafting. 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 Are we about to crush the juicer time? Is he ready? Is he ready to throw? What's he? Oh. What's he doing? He's doing the right things. Okay. He's doing what he's doing. Okay. We just need a perch. No juicer dragon. Minute and a half. He's got so much time. He's got so much time, guys. No juicer dragon. Come on. Come on. A minute and 20. Come on. What are we doing? What's it take? What? Is there a way to make it perch? Minute 10, one minute. 
Is there a way you know when it's perching? Is he perching? How do you know? Does he do a thing? A minute. Oh my god. Come on. What is he? What is the exact time he's got to be? Is it 1630? Sixteen thirty-eight, bro. How long is it? What is the average perch time? What? Perch. How long does it take to? How long does it take to bed kill it? Like, if he purchase at 20, is it good? He's got like five seconds? Bro, are you serious? What the fuck? <sighs> Bro. He can't do it. Game generating Bro, God seed I, what is this, man? Generating God seed Dude, what? this generated is dream seed. Bullshit. What you could have done instead of hiring Cam was outsource it to Fiverr or I don't know, get like, uh, you know, some some Filipino graphic design company. If you were one of those like TikTok guys out there who's like, you know, I fired my entire workplace and like fucking hired everyone in Pakistan for, you know, five cents an hour. It's fucking sick. Like you could be one of those guys and do that. But the reason why you didn't do that is because you feel as though correctly that Cam uh, yields better output. Hey, 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 no. Chewing? She almost. I don't caught her. It. No. You do it. No. Alfredo, you got to enforce the law on her. No. Afraid of no interest. Afraid of you have a monopoly yeah. on violence Go, in this, in this office. Dog. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I welcome. I uh, welcome. Uh, welcome to welcome yeah. break. Yeah. Okay. Please continue. Uh, how um, do I am? So <laughs> you don't do that, and and there should be restrictions on that. Uh, certainly, like there should be restrictions on being able to do that. Um, being able to just like completely outsource your your workplace. Um, those restrictions can come in a capitalist country in the form of tariffs, which many do. Protectionist trade uh, or protocols exist globally, with the exception of the United States of America, which has some protectionist policies. But uh, others that uh, I mean, most protection policies still benefit the interests of capital rather than the working class there. Um, and and trade partnerships have created a structure where like labor has been uh, outsourced overseas. Our manufacturing capabilities have been completely outsourced. These are very bad things that exist exclusively due to uh, exclusively due to greed that you understand uh, under under capitalism that needs to constantly be put in check. But a government that is designed, a government that's full of rich people that is interested in uh, in, in their own uh, in their own wealth and wealth accumulation that has stock options and trades like Paul Pelosi and, uh, and, and has, you know, that gets jobs for their family members and Goldman Sachs like Ted Cruz and, and many other examples is never going to, is never going to truly represent the interests of the working class and is always going to put the interests of capital ahead of the interests of the working class. You will never be able to have a real democracy. That's the difference between a bourgeois democracy and a proletarian democracy uh, or a dictatorship of the proletariat rather than a dictatorship of the capital owning class. I, I just want to know how the socialist workplace works. It seems so nebulous when you talk about it. It is. Right? is it, I don't think it's nebulous at all. I, you, I, I, I have a living, breathing, working right example right of it that I've given you. No, I know, not but really. like, There's got to be like a constitution that says, outlines, <laughs> or I don't know, whatever the fuck you want to write, right? There's got to be something that says like, or, or rule, laws, mm -hmm. that says, you know, this is the minimum that a person should get from the company. Yes. And it should be married to the output. Be, it should be married to the productive forces. It should be married to the output. That should be pegged We talked to, about this enough, though. I don't want to That should be people. pegged to the performance. <laughs> and I think that that is the best possible way I, to work. I guess my problem on that is, like, how could you possibly... Enforce that? How, no, not even enforce. How could you possibly even um, uh, analyze that? Like, how much, how much more... Uh, well, how much more money go, are we making because the janitor comes? That's where we go to the Walmart example. Um, that like we are already completely aware of that. We have you know what? Uh, it, we have actuaries. We have uh, CPAs that are working in real time, uh, making mathematical equations okay. to figure out exactly what not to pay people <laughs> technically. Um, and they could be in a What's total a social of reorganization people? of the economy with a socialist dogma. Okay. So would, would work in the opposite direction. Okay, it's kind of like this. I, I, please, let's move to another topic. Okay. I don't, well, don't want to bore people. Well, wealth, wealth was one <laughs> aspect of this, right? Like we already have property taxes, for example, in America, but we never make similar mathematical equations on capital gains, earnings that you make in the stock market. Wealth accumulation could work in the exact same way as property taxes, and yet we don't have any mathematicians working on that. That's a problem. good idea, but and, and that's a great idea, right? We'll probably do that in, in a lot of countries that aren't socialist. Um, well, <laughs> this is not just a distinction between socialism but that's, and whatnot. Okay. Because but, there is, we talked about theory. We talked a lot about theory, but then we also have to talk about like what is possible, right? At least that's in the true. short term. And that is the reason why I always try to tell more uh, rugged, 
more more uh, rigid, more um, uh, that's passionate where, socialists. That's where I'm coming to, from. Though. To cooperate, I know to cooperate with people that are also perceived as radicals in America. Like there's a reason why Bernie Sanders, who has been a socialist his entire life, basically has only implemented, instituted, or advocated for social democratic reforms in the United States of America. That's it. That's the only. There's the the only reason why he's done that is so that he can, uh, he can he can inspire the masses and and create an opportunity where workers have more control over their own lives and, and develop autonomy and inevitably develop class consciousness, creating uh, ample opportunity for There's so uh, many you, buzzwords. Uh, believe in that sort of oh thing, socialist revolution. Right, but that would never happen if the people were were happy with their conditions. I feel like that would not happen. But anyway, let, uh, so let me ask you this uh, to peg this down even more. In a socialist workplace, a socialized workplace, certain jobs are still going to get paid more than others, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so they're still going to be class. There'll be class, right? There'll be class distinctions in a socialist. No, the class distinction is not on pay. That's a that's a, no. a, a class liberal is on uh, understanding. That's actually why people relationship like, to ownership. I see people like you're the rich dude in the Porsche, and I'm the and I'm the working class dude in the Great Toyota. question. Great question. You don't think people will see that? So social hierarchies are inevitable. There will be different kinds of hierarchies. What you're talking about is is perfectly Wait. valid. But the class distinction in a socialist economy is not is is completely abolished because the idea <laughs> is and there will be those who have and those who have not is what you're saying at least in the interim people everyone will have but, but there'll be people will that have, have more exactly people who have a lot more yes some people that want to have more will be we'll able have a to lot have more. more and even a lot more yes and, this is why i always be part of a class this is why i always talk about no because Dude, they have no control over I, the lives I, of others in that regard i find the i don't know why hasan just the class in a marxist sense is your relationship to the means of production so a class like your class would be like you're a worker that means there's a capital owner that owns the capital that you work that makes money off of the land or capital that you work. That's the class, the only class in a, in a Marxist sense. I think it's how they view class. It's not like rich, poor, whatever. This idea that like people in a socialist country. He doesn't know though. I, Hassan knows this. I, I think he's just he's either stressed or not giving the right answer for some reason. Country who are, have a lot more. They're able to make a lot more money. Somehow won't be influenced by power or influence or greed. That somehow in this society, you're saying no matter what happens, dispelled. it will turn into capitalism. Is what you're saying? I think but there will be a, there will well, be. these people are going to be influencing the system to benefit power. themselves. Yes. Um, the best way to stop that from happening <clears throat> is democracy. Democracy in the workplace. Actual like we cannot even imagine. Mark Fisher once said, "It's easier to imagine the end of the world than, than to the imagine end, the, end the end of capitalism." capitalism. And he was right. Oh, uh, this is this is capitalist realism because we are having this argument within the boundaries and within the cultural understanding of like existing capitalism today and the reality is uh well there you we have no way you and i as it stands i have no way of like helping you try to imagine a world where like each individual worker has more autonomy and does not suffer from alienation you don't in their think it. workplace you don't which think. would offer them plenty of more educational opportunities plenty more free time um i guess the example you can point to <coughs> in, in terms of difference uh, different degrees of socialization would be a uh, a person doing contracted work at Uber, okay, to make ends meet in America, versus like a regular unionized uh, factory worker in Germany. The level of autonomy that they have, and the level of of interest that they have, and the level of engagement that they have in a workplace democracy or some form of it, is drastically different than the contracted Uber employee. Their worldview is drastically different. Their democracy yields uh, uh, drastically different results as a consequence. But let's of that. be realistic. We're not going to spring into an alternate reality where capitalism isn't doesn't We're not, dominate the world. Which is why I be which is why I always advocate which is for part of why I'm saying no, no. But that's why I always advocate for for that it's is why realistic. I always advocate for in the interim social democratic reforms that will yield more opportunities for uh, oh, yeah, that will yield so more opportunities for for uh, uh, for workers to organize now so, of course, so, hold you, can, on. you can prove you can I want to follow, say, I want to follow this out a little okay. further because I think it's interesting so in a socialist country there's going to be people who make a lot more and within a company are they exploiting their workers the the CEO the founder of a car company he makes a lot more than mm -hmm. the workers as long as, it is, as long as it is democratically organized in the sense that like uh, every single person is like, no, your your productive output in this circumstance is significantly higher than us, mm -hmm. then yeah, that that would and be. How do they valid determine that? Through a they do democratic like a, process. They have like after, a vote for everybody in the company has equal uh, ballot power. Uh, depending on uh, like how long you've worked at the company and and things of that nature, these are different formations at this point. Like th this is now we're getting into uh, like how do we organize uh, our workplace and like mm -hmm. how much power do we give each individual vote in the workplace? Yes, they would have one vote, but ultimately. Um, what are the matters that they are tasked with uh, voting on and there's a like even in unions there's a structure right like every single person does have a vote the rank and file will always vote but there's still a negotiations committee See, there's still someone engaging in the contract negotiations let me say this. there's still elections being held inside of the union does that make sense it does and, but and here similar, does this make sense yeah you're inside of and i want to ask you dan because I, I i'm curious about your opinion. you're inside a big company 
let's just say they make cars. There's tons of employees there. The, uh, the CEO, founder, he makes a lot more than the employees. Do you think that uh, oh, the leaders should make more than the workers, Dan? Uh, well, it just kind of depends on... Le I mean, there's... I think there's nuance there because I yeah. think it really depends on what what the company looks like, how it operates. Um, should should the CEO who is on a day-to-day -day basis working and managing a company make more money? He just works the same hours as the production people. I mean, with more responsibility, I think should inherently come with some more privilege. However, I mean, now... Are we talking about a CEO or are we talking about an owner? Because a lot of owners uh, don't well, do shit. No, I'm talking about someone who's working because the right. idea of ownership is probably different in a socialist. Right, and 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 the owners may it may be private or it may even maybe public company the, and the, the CEO. Then, so you you agree he should make more. So let's it just depends. Yeah. There's not there's just there's not room for nuance. We, you can't, there's just not. What do you mean? If, there's you, not if you're living in a socialist country, this shit needs to be like laid out. Like there's not room but for nuance like, where in every workplace no, just like we're going to decide the, just like different there's nuance rules for under capitalism where you have the freedom to no, but there's rules like regard. minimum wage but with rules exactly you would have the similar structure uh, pegged to like I'm trying uh, to ask you guys what the rules the like keep getting these nebulous like, like a maximum answers. wage tied directly but, to your lowest paid that, employee this is what I wanted to say though let's say do you hear what I said <laughs> I did maximum wage tied to like uh there there could be a, a situation where like a maximum wage could be implemented under a socialist structure <laughs> to ensure that every single workplace has at least a maximum wage that is directly tied to the lowest paid uh, lowest paid worker and their full blown compensations and benefits package that they okay, get. Okay, let's just go back to so the the CEO he earns more. He has more responsibility. Oh, Hassan, you said he's. I don't he agree with that more. either. No, no, no. I don't agree with CEOs having more responsibility or should earn more. For the record. Uh, uh, what? Is what you just said? No, that no, no, they no. I, if you're the an owner force, operator, if you're an owner operator and you're literally fucking, I was talking to Dan about this before, uh, earlier before you got here, but it's like. The difference between what you do and the difference between, like, let's say, a jewelry designer is that a jewelry designer can outsource their fucking labor. But you are the main product here, which I'm, is why which it's is very why hard for you to see it. I'm using a different example. Yeah. Like so if you're a fucking jewelry designer and you are responsible for all the beautiful designs in your jewelry that's, like, super competitive, everybody loves it, everyone wants to buy your fucking jewelry, right. um, you can still hire other people, like designers, to help uh, benefit that process and, and make better jewelry. Workplace okay. where everybody's altruistic, yes. they vote to say the CEO should make more money than us. Yes. Well, the way that works would be slowly but surely as you bring on more people into your company or as you expand and you grow, okay, in a democratic capacity, you are taking away the, the earnings that you have uh, right now and eroding it because you're giving it to some people that are coming in because you think that they're valuable enough to be able to, paid that way, uh, to be paid that way. But that process is being democratically voted on. And ultimately, you know that you're doing that because you're, in your understanding, Later down the line, if you care about this sort of thing, you're going to make even more money. Or rather, money, rather money should money, be a motivator. Money should not be a motivator. You're yeah, right. Why like, does in my C situation, why does not, the CEO care if his company makes more money? It's not. He's not going to make more money. No, no. It's long in the long term. You are creating more stability this way because you understand that every expansion of your of your uh, productive output, okay, yeah. every single piece of expansion on your productive output yields better long-term stability and more money if that's what you're fucking motivated by but ultimately that's not the main motivator and it should not be the main motivator anyway. i think that's a horrible thing to say if you're considering socialism that money's a motivator that's like almost i think like, some that's people, like almost like taboo i feel like no don't don't worry about what other people say in the situation or what you think people will perceive from what i'm let me go back let me go back because like cause, cause that's 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 relevant. <laughs> okay oh, so man. let's say in a world where the ceo makes more money do you think it's a, a possible or even likely situation that the the heads of these companies who make more money are going to want to influence the government and their workers to vote or support legislation that gives them more money or more influence. Is that a likely outcome? Wait, can you can you ask that again? Sorry, and, and I, I saw a comment saying you were rectangular and it fucked my brain a little bit. <laughs> I, I think that uh, I I think that yes, and I think that speaks to what Hassan was saying. Ah. I think that's what it speaks to what Hassan was saying earlier about why a lot of Marxists. Uh, uh, have criticism of social democracy that that lack of elimination of the capitalist profit motive part of the economy it doesn't will, will doesn't naturally work. result in what yeah, you're that's saying. my point so thank you dan in socialism Jesus. the motive the money motive doesn't it, it's literally in it's not compatible it doesn't work because you're going to have people at the top who are going to want more they're going to want more influence they're going to want more power they're going to want more money mm -hmm. and they are going to exert their influence their status even if they don't make more money they have status yeah, there's sure. going to be there's going to be they're going to have they're, they're going to be able to influence socialism it. is not egalitarian but in the sense that there's like what I'm saying, full blown equity. Here. Socialism so, does not socialism only exists socialism, when you remove the money motive, right? Dan? Socialism and the way we understand socialism, yes, uh, the money motive is is okay. now we're talking about that now like we're talking about the oh my god, how is this on so bad? At, uh, he can't even explain his own side.
the money motive can still exist in socialism. You can be a socialist company that's more successful than another socialist com company, and higher people in that socialist company are going to earn more money than other people in the company. The difference, though, is your relationship to your actual means of production. When you go and work for a company, you have an, equ an equity owner stake. That doesn't mean you've got the same voting power as everybody else. It doesn't mean you've got the same equity stake as everybody else. It just means that when you go to a company and you work, and the fruits of your labor are increasing the value of that company, you are directly benefiting from the increase of the fruits of your labor because you have an equity stake in the company. Now, you might be a really good artist and you go work for a better cooperative or you go work for a better company that is making more money for all of the employers or all of the employees. Well, employees and employers, since you're kind of one of the same. But like, that's that's the whole point. Like, you can still make more money in a quote unquote market socialist environment. That's totally fine. You can make more money in that environment. You can make more money than other employees in that environment. None of this is inherently contradictory. I don't know how Hassan can't explain any of this. Jesus. You, want to do. you don't want to remove the money motive because I'm in the I'm in the middle ground where I'm talking about like what's your social democrat. No, I'm not. I'm talking Sounds about like you are. I'm talking about the realistic short term period because I don't live in that. Reg I don't live with that with that. I operational agree that if we lived myself. in a, listen, if we if I, but agree, I know if that we other live, people can't do that dude, for the time being, if we could uh, just teleport into a utopian Star Trek world where money doesn't exist and everybody's equal. Yeah, everybody would love that. But let's talk about real shit. I am talking about real shit. Well, that's which is what why, I'm, that's all I'm, I'm trying to do too. You, which is why I'm giving you an example of like the interim period of moving towards socialization or social, uh, a, a socialist transitional I state. agree with that. But, but the problem is, when I describe that, you say, well, that's not socialism. I, like, I'm like, yeah, I know. Money being a motivator no, no. for certain I'm people. I'm saying once you move to socialism, the system, in my opinion, falls apart. It doesn't work because it falls <laughs> to the same trappings because people are going to want more power. They want more influence. You're going to have capitalistic parties. Thank you, Lena. They're going to want yes. to influence. You're going to have these external forces yes, that want who, that freedom. You're saying want that there will always be, even in a democratic organization and in the I believe workplace, the best there will be people that, we that make can, more, right? That's I believe the best that we can do yeah. is provide laws and regulations that guarantees people a fair, equitable life. Let me ask within you that, within those rules, I believe if you're operating within those rules, then you can do and make however much money as you want if you're operating the rules with a super progressive tax rate Nicole, and everybody's provided for. Because if you want to move to a socialist system, I don't mm -hmm. think that that I don't think that system actually works. So the cultural differences it, that we the cultural sense. differences that we see in countries that are still capitalist but social democratic versus countries like the United States of America that are hyper individualistic and and have like very little social democracy is the argument that I'm making is that with more social amenities and with higher degrees of socialization, people's attitude towards money and money making becomes drastically different. Status there are different, like there are different motivators. Out. Yes, status can be an important thing, but that, that social be. hierarchy, but that social hierarchy designed around status has nothing to do with the productive output and has nothing to do with like your material reality. It has the capacity to change like the way people perceive you. It's like an attractive person versus like someone who is maybe not as uh, aesthetically pleasing, right? Those things are going to exist. Like there's always going to, socialism doesn't mean like LeBron James has to be the same fucking height as like, you know, uh, like, a, like a five foot person to play basketball. There's going to be different earners. There's going to be, uh, there's always going to be some level of competition. Okay. This is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. This is okay. how you, this if, is how you if, innovate. If there's different levels of earners, do you agree that that seems to be incompatible with Marx's theory of socialism? Because no. if no, because no, it's absolutely not because it, all, all, and correct me if I'm wrong as long as you're more read on this than me, but mm -hmm. all, all that is being said at the end of the day is that people are entitled to the value that they create. Yes. If somebody creates more value than somebody else, then they are entitled to more value. The yes. theory is wonderful. Yes. But, and, the idea and I'm talking about, we're talking about real shit, right? Mm -hmm. But when people make more, they're gonna wanna influence. I'm not saying everybody, but again, this goes back to what I was saying mm -hmm. last week. There's people who are pathological. Okay. Yes, there's always bad things. And, and, and even in a socialist country, the sociopaths are probably going to float to the top just because they're willing to do everything that other people aren't or they care about status and power mm -hmm. where other people don't. And so these high-functioning, highly motivated sociopaths are going to want to influence government and business democracies mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. increase like, their power and influence. Like they do now under a Yes, capitalism. like they do right. now. Right. And okay. that's why I think it's not realistic to expect that not to happen. And I think the most realistic and the best way is in between. Because capitalism. Can I count on what you said? Hold on. Capitalism doesn't work. We know that. Mm -hmm. And I think socialism doesn't work for the same for the same exact thing. Because mm -hmm. people are going to want to. The psychopaths are going to want to move it. And the, I think the only realistic solution is in the middle, where you just create a sandbox that is good for everybody and operate within that sandbox. Because everything else seems like a fantasy to me. Every single thing that you've mentioned in both of these equations still revolve around human greed, turning humanity and the way people operate into capitalist little demons who are driven by profit. I do believe self-interest is a thing that happens. It's That's certainly true, which is why you have to have certain restrictions placed upon people that ensure that they don't go, uh, they don't get out of hand with the level of power they have. The way I describe it is this. In America, people always say, labor unions are corrupt. 
They're actually really bad. They have a rigid hierarchy, and they are also susceptible to nepotism. This much is true in certain labor unions. So there's been a lot of reform in the Teamsters and the UAW. Shouts out to that. No, what do you mean? Historically, there absolutely has been. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't say that about. Oh unions. no, no, I know you don't say that about unions. My point is this, though. The way I counter that always is this. There's always going to be corruption. There's always going to be, uh, you know, bureaucratic red tape. There's always going to be nepotism. But I would much rather, if corruption is inevitable, I would much rather have a more just and more equitable, a more democratic process that at the very least by its very design, like in the union structure, offers, offers tangible benefits to the workplace, to the workers, the rather than the corruption that we currently experience on it's a daily the basis under the capitalist that's, corruption. That's the same thing I want. Okay, which is why I said, um, you're, oh, but you're not comfortable with think, socialism with capitalist character. I also think that socialism, when you consider corruption and high-functioning sociopaths, there's a lot more risk when you, when you centralize the power at the top. Let's say one party... For a, for, a, for a dictatorship or tyranny. No, that, that I actually don't agree with at all. I think that the democratic process in and of itself, whether it's a multi-party uh, system or a single party system or a two-party system like we have that yields like uh, results exclusively, like the material changes that are made are, are done at the behest of corporations and the wealthy, capital owners. Um, no matter what, I think that a more democratic process is always going to be a better and more effective mechanism at fighting against centralized power and, and sociopaths that want to assume. Well, but not democratic when there are people that want things that aren't socialism. Because remember, those people need to be whatever they do in their gulags and the social provisions or re-educated permanently, right? Remember, all, democratic process is only good insofar as you're voting for the things that we want. But if you try to represent a viewpoint that is contrary to our liberal ones, boop, off to the camps and torture prisons for you. Doom control. I, I, I think that if there are, again, if that is an inevitability, no matter what happens, I personally believe that more of a democratic process is going to be more effective. I'll give you an example. I like democracy. DuPont too. Chemical. DuPont Chemical, under the capitalist, liberal, uh, bourgeois democracy in, in uh, the United States of America, was able to uh, dump toxic waste into farmlands and destroy natural water supplies and delicate ecosystems. They still do it to this day. This is where Ethan needs to pull out the 50 million fucking uh, examples of the USSR, the, you know, whaling certain species into extinction and the draining of the seas, the horrible irrigation practices, the mass famines. The, like, bro, do you think that these countries have better track records for environmentalism th than the United States? Like, hey, we have PFAS, the forever chemicals, right? Um, that is everywhere. We have microplastics, all that good stuff, right? In a situation where, let's say, DuPont, Farm DuPont Chemicals was like at least democratically organized, the workers themselves have more power to say, what the fuck are we doing? You're destroying my fucking uncle's uh, you know, farm. You're destroying my backyard. Right. And that way they can put a stop to it or at least demand changes to happen. The really hard one now, the really hard one for Ethan is, what if the majority of the people in that area though are loving this company so much that they all vote for them to be able to destroy the environment? Democratically. Because then Hassan's gonna go, well, okay, there'd be some government protections for that. Oh. So, like, in capitalism? Rather than expect the government to turn around and be like, all right, we're the EPA, we just realized that uh, we are going to... Uh, so you want we just less government or more government? Because socialism is no. all government. Government, no, that's not true, Ethan. Socialism is simply giving more power to the individual telling, in that regard. You have a government that also You're exists. telling people you do not have a choice. You cannot run your business this way. You, you cannot. Yeah, I mean, you... That's, the, that's, a, that's yes. a stronger government than we have. That's, yeah, that's a really but I think you want a stronger government. government than we have. You want a stronger well, government. Well, I want a stronger government. You want government more market regulation. Yeah, but it's even stronger than the one that I want. It yeah. says, here's your workplace. You must exist in it. So you're saying, on one hand, the EPA is silly. Well, the EPA, but on the well, other in hand, DuPont, in, the, in the situation with DuPont, the, if, you want, if you want me to finish this, because it's not hypothetical, this is something that actually happened. EPA said, sorry, we're gutted. We don't have any, we don't have like enough researchers. A lot of the researchers that work at EPA also end up getting jobs at DuPont or vice versa. There's always a revolving door, tit for tat. Uh, regulatory capture is something that these corporations do in an effort to monopolize and also improve their profit margins as always. So in that structure, the EPA basically delegated DuPont with figuring out how toxic their pollutants were. And of course, uh, until a journalist uncovered this entire thing, uh, they were able to claim that these toxic pollutants weren't as bad, right? So there is no mechanism the in the situation the where, we, is, where uh, we just, capitalism. Yeah, so we just sit there and we expect the government that uh, that is, you know, appointing people into positions of power that literally the have the material. Oh, no, listen. Yeah, but like in a socialist organization, this would be the same thing, right? Or are you saying in socialism, there's no appointments? Is is everything by direct democracy? Like, what do you what are we saying here? 
we expect the government to enforce certain regulations and restrictions that they do not because the people that are placed into that position of power have no interest or need in placing said restrictions or maybe even lack the know-how to do that. people in the company do don't want to make less money. So the, maybe they don't have access to all the data that well, the CEO Well, the beautiful has. part about that is that, at least historically speaking, what you're describing has never happened. What I mean by that is, what? when you look at the UAW, for example, it is supposed to be in their best interest to be anti-EV, and yet, for some reason, Sean Fain and the UAW's perfectly understanding of a well, Green New Deal... Never been uh, Hold up, that is absolutely not true. The A, I believe it's the AFL-CIO, right, is the largest union of unions collection using in the entire United States, has staunchly stood against the expansion of, uh, he's trying to, I'm sorry, Hassan is pointing out that the United Auto Workers should be opposed to electric vehicles, and they uh, and, and they definitely, uh, you know, but they're still voting in favor of them because it's good for the environment. Uh, fossil fuel unions have absolutely stood in front of turning on, uh, you know, solar power plants and stuff because it's threatening some of their fossil fuel jobs. This has absolutely happened. Uh, the idea that unions are all pro-green energy is super not true. There was a massive fight in Southern California to turn on a huge solar energy thing, and it was blocked by... Uh, it was blocked by labor unions. Um, I don't know if they ended up turning it on or not because I don't live there anymore. I'm so curious if um, U UAW stance on electric vehicle. Also, I don't even know why the UAW would necessarily oppose electric vehicles as long as they're still getting to... Um... I'm curious if the UAW, uh, ha the United Auto Workers have actually tried to fight against electric vehicles too. I wouldn't even... I wouldn't even believe Hassan on that. I'm so curious. This is a statement from Pence, but... Pence, UAW pushing back rightly against Biden's electric vehicle policies. Former Vice President Mike Pence supported the United Auto Workers strike, saying the union is pushing back rightly on Biden administration's policies encouraging electric vehicles. Hold on. I'm just, I haven't looked at this particular point. Do you really think it's not going to make AP fact check. Biden overstates UAW support of electric cars. President Biden glossed over important details and oversimplified the facts of his boast. In his boast about support for the, uh, from the United Auto Workers Union for his efforts to dramatically increase sales of electric vehicles. <clears throat> in his remarks Wednesday, Biden failed to say that the UAW did not endorse the EV targets he set in an executive order signed last month. The union support is also dependent in part on robust government support for union-made cars in the form of tax credits and legislation pending in Congress. While UAW has expressed support, general support for more EV sales, it has repeatedly declined to back goals urged by Biden in, as part of his ambitious plan to combat climate change. Biden last month... No, no, no. Remember, don't forget, at the end of the day, please do not ever forget this. Don't be stupid. Unions aren't here to help the country. Um, unions aren't here to make everybody's lives better. Unions aren't here to blow. A union is a business, essentially. A union is a firm that represents its members that are workers. Unions exist, ideally, in order to give more bargaining power to workers against corporations that they work for. That's the whole point of union. A union can do good things, and a union can do bad things. But at the end of the day, the unions, if they're not there for environmentalism or for socialism or for AOC or Bernie Sanders or Hassan Piker, a union is just there to represent the interests of its workers. That's it. Do not ever forget that. Don't ever forget that. That's all a union does, okay? No more and no less. It could be good. It could be bad. That's all it does, okay? The 50s, 60s, 70s, unions were there to enforce racism against their workers so that black people couldn't hold jobs. Um, today, you can argue that, uh, you know, unions exist to protect employers against uh, firms that have way too much fucking bargaining power, that corporations have gotten really big and now employees on their own can't uh, manage their labor against a big corporation who has way more, you know, monopoly or at least monopsony power depending on the market, right? So a, a union can be good, a union can be bad, okay? A union can be teachers coming together and fighting for more wages because teachers are historically underpaid in the United States, or a union could be police officers hiding the fact that another police officer innocently murdered somebody because they don't want to all get in trouble, right? Unions can't be good, they can be bad, okay? It just depends. All a union does is it, it, it supports the workers that are part of the union. That's it. No more, no less. That's it. Don't ever forget it. Don't ever forget it. Been and a company for that, that has a purely socialistic hierarchy where where they make true. there's there's cooperative where corporations people, okay where they make less like Mondragon is a good example uh, Mondragon is not the best example but okay it's that's like a federation of cooperations it's not one big co-op or whatever but uh, and have they been uh, have they been levied with the task of deciding to make less money to help the environment yes when absolutely. Uh, not not to, not, to, not to help not to help the economy but they my point is that saying one is better than the other is just theory. You know. Well, we are talking about simply theory I think because we don't agree EPA, that capitalism doesn't work. I think a strong EPA is great. In fact, I think you'd still need an EPA in a socialist country. I don't think it eliminates the need for the a EPA. Agreed, 100%. Which is what, what so I, then, exactly. So then what, what is the point? If, 
I'm saying is, in that socialist formation, there is actual real mechanisms of control that can put a stop to this kind of thing, rather than uh, rather than power accumulating in the hands of the few at the top of the corporate structure that then make these decisions, I think make these hiring practices, in theory, to get these it's people great. in the revolving door. In theory, what I you're think saying in, is in great. practice it would be great as well. I think in practice would be great, but I don't think it's I don't think it's possible. But but okay, so now so let's go back to this idea so of greed. First right? said, so saying, first you said the theory doesn't work. Now you're saying in practice it won't work. No, because it's not. It's not. And what it, I mean is that it's, you can't organize it that way. It won't work. In, in, you know what I mean? But, but I, we what I mean is that we, we do see different. You and Ethan is kind of railroading Hassan on this debate now. It's a little awkward, but. I are in agreement that higher degrees of socialization is a benefit, okay? We, we're in agreement. You yeah. like unions, you want workers to have more yeah. control, you want workers to have more power, more yeah. say, uh, and have more autonomy ultimately. Yeah. So you and I are absolutely in agreement <coughs> on that front. So to say that that doesn't work in theory, I, I think betrays the- i about the workplace specifically. Well, yeah, in the workplace as well. It's you, a, that's you're a in big, agreement, no? That's a huge difference. We spend 80% of our adult lives in the workplace. This is the most important and place I believe for it's political organization. Listen, um, we, we seem to have a disagreement with, about like greed. Like there seems to be this notion that people that live in a capitalist country, we, we understand greed and desire for wealth uh, differently than uh, an example we see is like- Also, keep in mind too, I'm sorry, I'll, I'm never, because he wants the credit for it, so I'll give him the credit for it, okay? He is the biggest and baddest, okay, politics streamer on the internet, he's supposed to be the most knowledgeable dude on this shit, and he's kind of sort of getting reamed by Ethan Klein, who, not to knock Ethan, he's not stupid, but he's definitely not the uh, premier politics doer on the internet, just saying. Native Americans, and that's part of why I can't conceive of a true socialistic country. You're, you're As a union business agent, they do more than just what Destiny said. What do you mean, the rot bringer? Please tell me what union you're a part of, or what industry, and what do you think you're, what do you think you do that is opposed to what I just said? Saying that, like, uh, you know, primitive communism or primitive accumulation, which has been uh, the foundation of like societal development for much longer than uh, the industrial revolution or post-industrial revolution capitalism. Right? How big is DG compared to Hassan? I mean, it really depends. Um, if we're talking about how big is DG in terms of like political relevance, we're basically nobody. We're probably some of the most irrelevant people on the internet. But if it's ever a day where Hassan feels sad or people are bullying him, then we are literally the strongest, most malevolent force on the internet. Uh, it really just depends on his mood from day to day or the mood of whatever political person I'm wrestling with, I guess. Right. Um, I've seen a lot of people say that greed is learned. That if you grew up in a, in a pure yes. socialist society, no, absolutely, self interest is a okay. is a real thing that people have. But people can be taught, and people can uh, learn that the the collective aspects of societal development are far more important for self interest than the individual, the hyper individualistic. Like I'm gonna get mine, fuck everybody else. So, so let me. The point of going to this greed discussion is to talk about like human nature, and that in a I believe that in a perfect society, socialist society, there'll be forces of influence of wealthy people, people with status, people with power, wanting it more for themselves. Mm -hmm. My argument and, and, and I the, believe that that's, an, and I believe that that's innate. Yeah, if, if, so first of all, uh, I think that there's a biological imperative. I think that, like I said, what's the self difference? interest, self interest can be, what's if you have a resource hoarding and greed. Yes. So how is, how is accumulating lots of money different than resource gathering or so accumulation? I will describe it to you. A society that heightens uh, collectivist understandings, okay, as a consequence of it being directly tied to our, uh, at this point, our means of production and how we understand it, how we how we uh, generate commodities, is going to have the exact opposite opinion on collectivism versus hyper individualism in the way that you see it under capitalism. More people will have a a collective understanding that like we are in this together and that we're working side by side. Um, Most not all. And then yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. And. The reality is that there will still be people who are self-interested, people who will still want to utilize uh, uh, the, the existing constructs, the existing hierarchies to their immediate advantage mm -hmm. at the cost of others. But my point is that if that is an inevitability, which I agree, because there will be people who are sociopathic, criminals, okay, uh, charlatans, least, uh, okay. the lumpen pros and whatnot, yeah. okay? That yeah. will always exist. But even if that exists in the hype, in, and I'm being very realistic about this, <coughs> Wouldn't it be better to have more mechanisms of control in the form of democracy and have to, and ensure a world in which everyone has more autonomy in a place where they spend 80% of their lives on? It would be. So yeah, then, then we are in agreement. There's a rubber band, you know, it's pulling us, the center of gravity is social democracy. Capitalism, socialism, and the rubber band's pulling us in both directions towards the center. That's what I believe. Okay. And my point always is that while marginal incremental reform in social democracies were made when uh, there was actually a counterforce in the form of communists, trade unionists, anarchists, and the like, okay? They have been thoroughly eviscerated both in this country and in Europe as well, which is precisely the reason why you see Europe following the American attitude with, uh, uh, with, it, with its own uh, conditions uh, getting worse and worse year over year. If you're willing to at least acknowledge that there are going to be 
innately, just as a product of the human condition, people that are born greedy with a, with a desire to want to hoard resources. I don't know why you're afraid to say greedy. They're hoarding resources. Um, if you're yeah, willing to yeah, admit that they're going to be like, bad like, people, yeah. then, then that's okay for me because there was some takes I saw no. that pretended like that. Don't don't have a conversation okay. with people on, on, on Reddit who also themselves will probably change their uh, ideas. There's, there's, people are very rigid, especially under the guise of anonymity online. Uh, it's, it's not reflective of the, the actual conversation that you could be having that's productive. Okay, good. I'm glad you hear that. But I, yeah. So let's move on. I to fall into this trap too. I yell at fucking people in my child all the time because I sometimes uh, lose sight of like sarcasm and I can't get an accurate assessment because I don't know where that they're coming from. That be really bad. Okay. But I want to continue this. If you, okay? if you go to pee, I'm fucking, everyone's a communist after this. I'm just letting you know. It's okay. You can have While you're peeing, I'm just going <laughs> to. Maybe we should both go so you don't get the advantage. No, I'm going to get you the advantage. You don't need to pee? No. You always pee before me. No, I'm holding it in. <laughs> no, I don't need to pee. <laughs> no, there's no shot you don't need to pee. Yeah. I'm not taking pee. a pause. Oh, God. <laughs> no, I'm not. You want me to mute his mic? That's fucked up. Um, I'm reading. I'm reading the nope, comments. No, I have control. I have control. Uh -oh. uh, there you go. The comments now. Oh, no. I, um, I think this is. A, I think this has been a, a relatively productive conversation. I mean, God knows what people will do to pick this apart. Because we're every single time we have conversations, very frustrating that like there is a secondary market, like a, like a cottage industry of, of people who will like pick apart every uh, detail and sure. make these like grand uh, assertions off of it, which is very frustrating because it's like. I guess if you're from one of these communities out there, and there's plenty of them, mm. uh, there's so many Who's people that make about? videos, right? <laughs> I mean, how we do like, it. Don't... I mean, like, bro, you're doing a public podcast on the internet. Yeah, people are going to react to your shit. You do it too. Why do you watch Ben Shapiro? Why do you watch Andrew Tate? Why do... Yeah, yes, this is what we do. Hello. Destiny, do you generally support unions? Even with police union example, couldn't that union be seen as positive pushback comparable to our company? Um, I, so... My um my feeling is that um my feeling is that today capital is incredibly powerful. Corporations are incredibly powerful. Uh, I feel like it's pretty essential to have unions to negotiate on the side of the labor against capital because capital has so much power today in the United States, probably in most of the Western world. So I would say, largely speaking, I think unions are good things because we probably need more representation on the worker side versus the corporation side, which has plenty of advocacy for itself. So, yeah. I'm not going to say like that the H3 podcast is... I mean, I would say the H3 podcast, we do that too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, we do that as we do that as well. Yes, I do that as well. But like, my, my question always is like, if you're coming from one of these communities, like, don't you feel like you're duped a little bit by your by whoever you trusted into believing that there is like genuine uh, discord and and division here? Like, talking about you. Nobody thinks that like this podcast is probably not ending based on this disagreement. I didn't I say that like you would be pretty unhinged to think that they're gonna like shut their podcast down over this. It's just funny to watch the premier political stream on the internet, like be so utterly f***ing clueless defending the ideology that he spent like so many years simping for against no offense but against ethan Klein. that's just very funny you and ethan uh yeah like me and ethan, out. or even well people didn't attack you as much surprisingly it was more so me even though you and him had a a, a big disagreement as far as <laughs> well, like, nobody gives man. a shit about me i mean come on uh, it's, it, it was I odd i don't know because oh, like, you, you have a lot of uh differing opinions as well but for some reason you weren't getting uh you weren't getting criticized as much it's almost like people are more self-interested in, in certain directions it's almost like people have different expectations for people depending on how they sell themselves on the internet. Like, what? Like, do you think he's saying something insightful or profound there? <laughs> like, <laughs> but I think there's definitely an element of that. People definitely have it out for you. And also, I think uh, I think I saved myself a little bit by being um, uh, at the beginning. I don't know if you caught how much of that conversation you caught, but I, I was very reluctant to engage in that conversation. And so, you know, anything that I said was kind of tinged with the fact that like Dan doesn't even really want to be here. So I, I guess maybe that softened uh, people's anger. I'm sure people did get angry about it, but frankly, I, I was stressed about it afterwards just because like, I, I don't know, I, I don't like being the center of attention. And so I stayed off of, I stayed off of social media all weekend. I, I just didn't look at it. Yeah, they just said they were glazing me up. Well, I'm sure some people were, but. Yeah, they um, were saying Queen Dan, when, <laughs> they were saying when. Um, yeah. You know, maybe I'll take this as an opportunity to, uh, to drop a little bit of knowledge. I don't think I've ever actually shared on the show. Uh-oh, knowledge. Uh, um, my, uh, one side of my family was actually, uh, I am descended from a bunch of like hardcore Bolsheviks in the Russian revolution. I knew it. Fuck dude. That's you. That's I right. We were actually trying to draw this out of you, dude. You're fucking done. God son. My, my last name, Swerdlov is a uh, bastardization of Sverdlov, who was uh, one of Lenin's like lieutenants in the revolution. You don't want to this out? Um, sure you want this to go out? Right, so, I mean, I'm kidding, I'm this, kidding. we're talking like Damn, great, we're talking like great great uncle or something here. I, I, you know, I it's I just, not really like, directly your, your connected. The, your family's proletarian mm -hmm. violence and his contributions have been noted, man. <laughs> yeah, that's we're Zaris here. How dare you? <laughs> sorry, sorry, I didn't want me yeah. to piss off the whites. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I know. I always see this picture, and I'm always like, dude, he seems a little too comfortable in that outfit. <laughs>
But like, he's just really not uniform. It's a Halloween costume. It's a Halloween costume. I'm not a weirdo. Red scare. Red scare. Yeah. Red scare. Red scare. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to some more practical topics. But before we do that, I want to say, I think this is a great conversation. I agree. Anyone that's mad, you're wrong. Yeah. 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 This is a good conversation we're having. You know, people get heated, but uh, I've been I've been keeping an eye on the chat, and uh, I think a lot of people have found this uh, really interesting. Okay, good. Yeah. Wrong. <laughs> the last time was a little jading, but I wasn't gonna stop me. But anyway, also I want to emphasize that we agree on so much, like literally ninety five percent. In in the and practical go, application, in the short term, we are in agreement one hundred percent of the way. If yeah. you like Bernie Sanders, then you know you're good with me. That's like that's my opinion because Americans do not have any class consciousness, and you have to build that. There are certainly differing opinions, like people who believe in accelerationism or whatever. But I truly think that uh, America will only accelerate towards barbarism as it has, and not necessarily socialism, without any kind of. Uh, Without people believing that, like they have any any kind of autonomy in the workplace, any kind of means of collective bargaining in the workplace. Okay, so anyway, my point is, if you're angry, <laughs> you're just you're being silly right now. This is good. This is a good you're conversation. Wrong. And on my part, again, I'm come from I'm pretty you know ignorant. So this is good for me to kind of. I think you undersell yourself. My... I think I think you are more importantly than anyone else. Ignorance is is one thing, but you're very curious and True. you're charitable uh, when you want to learn things. And I think that that is truly important as opposed to being like, I've made up my mind. This is good. I mean, obviously there's still hangups, yeah. uh, but that's always going to happen. It's it's just, Thank you know, you. this kind of dogma is too powerful. It, everyone I mean, has their own journey. The fact that we have like over 30,000 people watching like a really in, I mean, analytical kind of nuanced debate about, about, about this. Yeah, socialism and, and social democracy is pretty Yeah, good. I'm happy to see that. And like Hassan <laughs> said earlier, I mean, I, I think there's been a massive uh, sea change in this country in the last decade, largely. Thanks to Bernie Sanders, Don't say but Bernie I would even Sanders. go further back and say like okay. the Occupy stuff and the financial crisis is when it really Actually, started. You know to what? Creep Bernie Sanders the... probably did drive a bit of it. That's to be fair. To be fair, he did. He did. Consciousness, but I, like I can't imagine having this conversation when I was like a teenager. You know what I oh, mean? Oh yeah. Like it would be a non-starter in yeah. this country. And well, I... we're both radical, by the way. As we're saying by yes, you sure. yourself yeah. in the eyes of the broader American even public now, are. I would be considered radical by compared to everybody. someone like myself. Yeah. Yes, people will go. Oh, she seems reasonable, which I personally love. I think that that's a great thing I don't think because the more that. insane i look though. the more sane you look and in the short term <laughs> oh. what you're advocating for is unironically a good thing Rob, which is why I also you look crazy for once i look sane for once no but like but that's my point is that that's why i also uh, we're working in the same the that's same why i also comment. try to engage in movement building in the other direction as well whenever there's like because there's plenty of people who fucking hate me on uh, to the left of me who have like radical, you know, Maoist third worldist opinions or whatever the fuck. But I never give that any kind of light or any kind of attention or dunk on it because I feel like, yeah, they look crazy or whatever. Who gives a shit? Ultimately, if they are working in their own way to erode the power that capital has, then you're good in my book. And that even extends to social Democrats to the right of me as well. So just to summarize my point before we move on, it's essentially this. I believe social democracy can address all the issues that socialism attempts to address and also offers a more realistic and a, a proposition for a, a, um, an organization of society. That's it. But let's move on. Fun times. Okay. Well, I'm glad I got to share these moments with you. It was uh, super fun. My flight leaves at 7. I still have some like, packing I need to do. It's like 6. Or what is it? It's 3.30. Oh, we got a good reference from good friend of the stream, um, Matt Walsh. Thank you, sir. Yes, if only more men could be pathetic, disgraced cuckolds like left-wing streamer Destiny. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Matt Walsh. I feel like if I still did dono sounds, that would absolutely be a dono sound, but... I love you guys. Ribbon, a cappuccino, a cappuccino, a cappuccino.